All right, this is one of those tales that goes something along the lines of you set out to do something you think is going to be very simple, and in the end, it turns out not to be. So I think I mentioned to you guys recently, I've got this large, and yes, I will call it a hoard of tubes. I've been hoarding tubes for a long time. And historically, I thought I would never sell those. When I retire one day, I'll sit down and start testing them and maybe sell them. Well, me and my wife got a couple of business ventures we're wanting to do, and um, I've always tried to make all of my hobbies self-funding. So if I buy a new turntable or a new amplifier, somehow I've made the money in my hobbies to fund that, and I'm not taking that out of my personal checkbook. And me and my wife agreed, if I could sell off a bunch of stuff, we could fund these other business ventures, and not take money out of our checking account, it'd be a win-win. So, anyway, that leads me to uh, these thoughts I had in my head a few weeks ago, right? So I'm sitting in the den watching TV with my wife one night, right? And you can see here our den, it's uh, pretty uh, cozy, just um, old country type uh, style den would be our, I think my wife calls it craftsman style or something, but anyway. Um, here's the here's the bottom line. I am not allowed. So the, our house is kind of two and a half stories, you could call it. Um, we got the main story with our kitchen, the den, the uh, dining room, kids' bedrooms, bathroom, whatnot. Then you got an upper section on our house on on one half that is our bedroom basically and closets and whatnot. And then there is a full basement. And the, the way the rules go here at my house. I can do anything I want in my basement down here. I, I mean, I could I could put in a bomb shelter, I could, you name it, whatever I wanted to do down here, my wife would not care. She rarely, rarely, maybe once a month, comes down the stairs to the basement. This is my domain. The deal with that domain, though, is I am not allowed to extend my domain above the basement. I cannot go into the first floor or second floor at all, ever. That's been the rule for a long time. So I don't have posters upstairs. I don't have albums upstairs. I really don't have a lot of stereo set up. I've got, I've, my wife did allow me to put something in the bedroom just to listen to at night. But for the most part, my, my world is here in the basement, right? So I'm sitting there watching TV one night with my wife and I look over and to the right of us, there is a built-in desk. It's a beautiful walnut desk that was built um, in the late 60s. And, um, you know, it's more decorative than anything. You can see here, it has pictures on it, um, whatnot. But I can't even remember the last time somebody sat down at that desk and did something. My kids were probably in elementary school, which means, you know, 10 plus years ago, right? Um, so I'm thinking, hmm, I look over at my wife and I said, honey, if would you be okay if I just brought up put a laptop over there on the desk and maybe a little printer and one little metal box um, and I could sit over there at night and do some things while you um, while we watch TV together and uh, she looked at me a little odd and she said tell me more about what you're doing I said well I want to test some tubes and it was like eh! that was the end of that conversation so <laughs> You know, I thought, darn it. And the reality is when I come downstairs to the basement and I sit down to do things, I don't get a lot of time in my basement. You know, some time on Saturday mornings, Sunday, and maybe at, maybe at best a half an hour at night, right, um, in the evenings. Because most evenings I come home, I, I eat dinner with my wife, I watch TV, we go outside, do something in the yard, gardening, flowers, whatever. Um, I don't get a lot of basement time. I do get a little more in the winter time, but Having said all that, I can sit in my basement for three or four hours while I'm doing other stuff and I'll get like four tubes tested. I just, too many, the phone rings, my wife calls me upstairs, I'm trying to get something soldered, whatnot. You just, I can't multitask and be good and efficient at tube testing. So I'm thinking to myself, I gotta find a way to be able to do this upstairs while we watch TV at night. So I'll get to looking on Amazon and I find this cart and I'm thinking, hmm, what if I made a portable setup that I could roll into the den, test tubes while I'm watching TV, and then at the end of the night, I roll it away, put it into a storage closet, and not um, have this in the house. I talked to my wife about it, and after about a week or two of coaxing, she finally said, I'll let you try it. 
So, uh, woohoo! So, I ordered a, 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 a just an older used Windows laptop. I ordered a spare printer because I want to be able to bring the e tracer back and forth up and down, and I didn't want to have to bring a printer and a PC and everything else. So, um, I even reached out to Chris and said, Hey, if I bought a second <laughs> e tracer just for uh, you know my secondary use, would you give me a super deal? And it even then it still turned out to be you know cost prohibitive. So, um I decided not to do that. I thought I'd move the e-tracer back and forth, but I don't want to move PC, don't want to move printer. So I bought those. And as you can see here, I have been testing tubes in my den at night now. And at the end of the night, I kind of unplug the power strip that I've got mounted on my cart. I roll it all in, put it into a spare bedroom, a store, kind of storage room, and my wife is happy with it. So you, you can see here, I've gotten this many tubes tested in a week, probably 200 tubes here. These are all 12 ATs, 12 AUs, 12 AXs, and some 69, 22, 60 J8s that I've been testing. And uh, I'm going to make some progress is what I'm <laughs> coming to realize. So at any rate, it's working out for me finally, but it didn't come without some blood, sweat, and tears. And let me explain that to you. Oh yeah, by the way, the 200 tubes I just showed you that were tested, I uh, probably tested more like 800 tubes, and those were the good ones. There's another two-thirds of those that either got sorted into, like I've talked to you guys before, bags that, you know, I'm putting them in Ziploc bags I've got labeled that are either, you know, good but not matched or weak and uh, or bad, you know. And um, so uh, these are the good tubes I got out of all I've tested. So I've made some significant progress in a week just having this new portable setup. I know it looks trivial, simple, dumb, whatever you want to call it, but it's working for me. Anyway, a couple of things I found at first. Um, one, moving the e-tracer up and downstairs, I decided to add some handles to my e-tracer here on each side. Um, I had picked up uh, about 50 of these for, I want to say a quarter or 50 cent a a handle um, at a ham fest. I didn't pay much, like 10 bucks for 50 of them or something like that. And um, and I've had them for a while, just waiting to maybe use them on some gear someday. And um, lo and behold, I found a good use for it. So I really like this. It makes just grabbing the e-tracer, you know, and heading upstairs or downstairs um, much easier. All I have to do then is plug in two things. One, the power cord and two, the uh, USB connector here on the back. So it makes, makes it pretty easy. At any rate, um, I'm testing along, and one day I sit down to test tubes, and all I did was roll the unit out of the den and back into the den. Um, I sat down to test tubes, and no matter what tube I test, it would only test half the tube. I'm thinking, this is weird, and I go through a bunch of software settings, and, and I played around with the, you know, the wires on this, making sure they were all plugged in and whatnot. And so I thought, maybe it's maybe it's my PC software USB kind of thing. So I brought the tube tester downstairs and I plugged it up here in my PC and everything was fine. I was testing the exact same tubes that was testing both sides. Then I carry the unit upstairs and I hook it back up and I think, what the heck? Then it won't test either side of the tube. And I'm like, dang it. So I bring it back downstairs and I start doing a bunch of testing on it and I can't find anything wrong. I mean, I'm even using, using a you know, a, 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 um, you know, kind of a um, continuity test on every one of these wires, making sure I don't have bad that. I took it apart, made sure I didn't have any bad solder joints, whatnot on my connectors in there. Couldn't find anything. I take it back upstairs, then it tests half a tube. And uh, it's just driving me bonkers at that point. And uh, I start working with Chris a little bit on what might be going on and come to find out the problem lies in that my laptop and the USB current that it can provide to drive the S-Box 12 on this and the relays um, is too low. In other words, too much voltage drop there and it's not engaging the relays fully. So, at any rate, Chris ended up um, you know, making a change to his design as a result of this. And for those people that buy new ones, I think you'll get a, you know, something that he's modified to, um, to, to fix that. For those existing customers, there's a simple little fix for it. Um, one, or three, three ways. One, um, you can use a powered USB hub, and that's the route I went. I just bought a little USB hub that's powered to power my printer and this unit, and then that way the, these devices are getting power from the 
powered USB hub and not from the laptop. Um, second way you could go about it is just plug a simple little wall wart into the back of um, this thing. You can notice here it'll go from 9 to 30 volts. Um, you just need about a half a million or half an amp current rating and that will power the unit and you won't have any more issues. The third way is you can go in here and you can solder across the diode and bridge that diode out of the mix and it, it reduces the voltage drop coming from that diode um, and it will solve your issues but then at that point you cannot use this um, little jack on the back because that's what that diode was there for was to protect um, feeding both from in from the laptop and from that jack so anyway Chris is sorting all that out but um, I've solved my issue with the USB hub and so far it's you know it's it's working great and you can see I'm testing tubes again anyway Fun little story, it's one of those where you know, I put a whole lot more time and troubleshooting into this and planning than I ever thought I would, but it's paying off in the end and uh, we're happy with it. I just thought I'd share.